Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today is the day when I am going to share an exciting project with you guys that I am going to start and this is going to be a, a lengthy project and it will take a couple of months going forward. But if you are a developer with like zero experience, you want to become a developer and you want to pursue Kotlin as a, as a primary language for you, uh, so this series is specifically designed for you. So in this series, we are going to learn Compose Multi-Platform from zero. So if you don't know Kotlin or Compose, worry not because I'm going to cover most of the basics of Kotlin and Compose in this series as well and we'll take it uh, from there to real life projects. So in this video, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to share what exactly the roadmap would be or what topics we are going to cover in this series. I have basically distributed this uh, project into four phases. This is the section. Uh, in phase one, we will be covering the basic foundation setup, you know, and Kotlin basics. In phase two, we are going to cover the Compose UI fundamentals, uh, the whole Compose framework. Phase three is going to be more like advanced features and then platform specific integration into this. Phase four is going to be the real projects and we'll be covering, like we'll be making a lot of different projects. Now, if I go forward and show you what exactly if I plan to, to do for phase one, uh, again, we'll be starting with the very basic uh, why let compose multi-platform in 2025. Uh, uh, as you might know that iOS now is stable and production ready, which is like really cool thing. And now you can, you know, pro create production ready app uh, we'll compare it with Flutter, React Native, and uh, specifically the native development. So, so that's something. Uh, the next thing would be the setup uh, again, set, setting up the projects, creating the Hello World project. So, I'll be basically going, get, getting you through the project structure of how the Compose Multi Platform structure is and all that. And then we'll be understanding this Compose Multi Platform architecture of how like the shared code and uh, like a uh, platform specific code are basically managed um, again uh, there will be like uh, some specifics like uh, understanding the actual expect declarations of how to configure the multi platform and uh, there will be platform specific dependency management and all that then comes the multi platform fundamentals which is the kotlin basics uh, this will be again like for very beginners then we'll be covering up the data classes seal classes we'll cover the core routines then uh, basics uh, collections uh, functional programming null safety in type system so these are the like the very basic uh, uh, kotlin related stuff this will be important for us to understand to learn the basic fun fundamentals of how the kotlin works then we'll be setting up you know the first uh, multi-platform uh, application will be using some sort of uh, counter app to uh, understand how how things work and all that uh, along with you know some basic uh, stuff that we, we, we basically will be learning uh, we'll cover up most of the compose related stuff in the in this next phase but i'll basically show you how some basic ui we can create and how we can use it in like different platforms so that's something uh, that we will be doing and that will be the wrap up of phase one in phase two uh, there comes like more uh, detailed compose covering uh, more detailed compose related stuff so like columns rows box layouts how arrangements alignment works spacers paddings constraint layouts uh, responsive designs how basically we'll be covering getting the responsiveness for the designs state management is again like the very important thing for compose uh, so the state management will be there um, we'll be covering state and state less composable remember mutable state of drive state of uh, state hoisting patterns uh, view models uh, best practices practices for uh, state management and all that uh, then we'll be covering the material design three components uh, what what are what is available and all that text fields navigation drawer app bars material adoptive components and all that uh, then we'll be covering the list and data display of how basically listing works like lazy column lazy raw vertical grids horizontal grids and then how we basically animate them how we can pull to refresh and how basically we, we can basically add pagination and all that so that we can you know handle a lot large data uh, efficiently with this so that is like again then we will be using images and resources of how basically we use the drawables how we use the images how we use the other resources in the project so that's also uh, part of this 
uh, and animation and transition is the very core of uh, compose so that is also something that i will be covering uh, so basically animate as state uh, anim uh, transition animation animated visibility we will be try to create some sort of custom animation for that and then along with animation there comes a huge constraint of performance uh, so basically we'll be uh, also covering up some sort of performance optimization of how we can achieve performance with with, with having the animation and all that then uh, we'll work on some custom uh, components and theming um, I have covered a lot of custom components in my previous projects as well that basically were for Android but we'll again like uh, cover all that how basically you can create reusable components that you can use at multiple places uh, maybe using canvas you can draw something using canvas uh, theme customization is like really important of how basically themes work with, with uh, color scheme different color schemes how the like dark mode light mode things and then the typography that you can use so like so all these things like uh, uh, will be part of this phase uh, so that's basically phase two in phase three we will be covering up the na type safe navigation so the navigation is basically a whole lot of features uh, that we will be using uh, we have implemented a lot of navigation related stuff in our existing projects uh, uh, the specifically the type safe navigation system is stable in android but uh, in multi-platform it's currently in beta so we'll be using that that is uh, like a very exciting thing and uh, it's very pretty pretty simple to implement so that's something and it in, it include a lot of different use cases uh, like type safe navigation with serializable objects uh, navigation like graph how to basically use nested navigation how basically we can add a support for deep link uh, and how we can test and all that so that is like very uh, core thing that we will be implementing and then there will be platform specific thing for example how the expect and actual functionality works how platform specific uis we can create how we can you know have something very specific for ios for android and web and you can use it uh, like uh, at, at, at one point so basically these are the things that are like uh, specific to platform so there will be cases where you know some sort of implementation is needed to be done on the on the ios side uh, just because that is related to native and all that so this is like very cool thing uh, that we will be covering in this phase uh, the network and data management is like a very core thing so we'll be you know exploring ktor client how basically we can do serialization uh, repository patterns how we can handle the errors and like how if there is like a need how we can you know create some sort of offline uh, re architecture for this as well then local data storage uh, sql delight is like a very Im important part of multi-platform data databases uh, room is also there so we'll be like exploring sql database and room and you know how basically you can access files how you can implement some sort of caching and all that and how we can synchronize it like your existing data with your backend some so so these are like again very core and important things that you basically use in a real time projects as well so that's uh, again something uh, again then the last oh sorry uh, the next part would be dependency injection we have used dependency injection we have used coin previously as well but we'll again use it with how basically it works with multi-platform how you can you know create different dependencies android specific dependencies ios specific dependency and then use them like in a common section and all that so that is like very cool thing um, then you will be having um, uh, how you can test them how what are the best practices and patterns that you can use for this lastly this is like very important a very like uh, stuff which basically helps how you can test the code that's basically written in, in you know multi-platform so the unit testing and then i uh, will be testing ui testing using like uh, with with compose and then platform specific testing if there is like some sort of implementation that is like platform specific so we'll do that uh, and, and and like there will be a lot of a lot of things that we will we'll cover in the testing as well uh, then performance we discussed performance previously as well performance is one of the core thing uh, of any app so we'll be covering up how we can you know have bet best practices practices for, for performance uh, what kind of memory management things that you can you can explore and how you can use them if they're like any ios specific in performance improvements that basically available in, in compose multi-platform 1.7 plus 
So all these things, how you can profile, how you can use debugging tools, how you can improve the launch time optimization and all that. So that is uh, important uh, for, for, for performance. So that is something we'll be covering. And then uh, accessibility and the internationalization is like, again, something uh, like most of the time we ignore this, but this is like very core. So like accessibility, uh, we'll be using that uh, uh, screen reader, voiceover support, uh, uh, semantic properties, multi-language support, internationalization is like really important. And then uh, with, with the internationalization, there will be like RTL support as well. Then comes the part four or phase four of this CD project, which is like creating some real time projects. So this is where we will start working on creating some actual real-time projects right so there are a couple of that are basically i've shared one is the task manager app travel app ride sharing app but it will not be limited to these we will be creating a hell lot of projects in this specific series so it will be a continuous series i'm not sure how long it will take with like when once we start working on the on this but uh, uh like this is something that will keep on keep on uh like increasing uh, we'll be adding more and more content to this now uh, there is one more phase which is kind of a bonus phase uh, and that is the phase five that will be covering some sort of advanced it will be part of like phase phase four but you know i will try to to, to do to try different things with different projects and different uh, like uh, projects that we'll be working on so we'll be like exploring some uh, architecture patterns how you can use them with multi-platform like mvv mvi clean architecture how you can modularize your projects uh, how you can you know uh, or feature module organizations how you can you know consider scalability when you're working on project and so so these kind of things will be will be part of the phase four but i'm like listing down as phase five because these are the some some things that i wanted you to understand or to know that this is something that will cover and then uh cross cross platform integration again we discussed that so this is like how uh in a better way how you can you know uh, implement ios swift integration how android specific platform integration will be done web web based platform third party sdk integration again is a very core thing so that is something that will be adding into this lastly there will be ci cd and automated deployment of how basically you can implement ci cd for your project so that you know if there is when you build something, when you push something, you merge something, uh, the, the GitHub actions basically help you basically uh, execute all the three or four platform for you. So iOS, Android and uh, web basically all these three executes and then automated testing basically if you, once, once you basically implement the test, the CI CD will help you know run all those tests and all that. Uh, App Store deployment uh, is again a very core thing. So normally when you, you know, merge something into your release branch, uh, it is supposed to, you know, create a build and pu publish. So we'll, we'll basically cover that as well. How you can uh, uh, manage the versions and releases. So all these things will be part of CI CD. And this is something that I'll be I'll be covering in this project as well. Lastly, monitoring and analytics is very core to any project in, in real time when you work in a, in a company or when you work with any project or real time project production app. These are the core of how your product is performing, right? You can create anything in the world, but if you don't have the monitoring or analytics, you don't know how exactly it is performing, right? So this is like a very core thing uh, that we will cover, which includes the crash reporting, how basically if there are any crashes and all that, how you get them, analytics of how your, which part of your app, like which core, which, which functionality is basically being used more, like if how you want to have some sort of conversion for a specific feature. So all these kind of things were basically covered through analytics, how you can implement, like uh, you can definitely look for the performance if they like ANRs or like things like that, how you can collect feedback from user. So this is, and then there is A-B testing strategy. This is very core when you're working in, 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 in real time production app, you don't like uh, just change everything. You have to, you know, split test different kind of things. Let's say, for example, if you have a button and you want to test what text 
on that button will perform better so you split test them so some part of user gets one test and the some part user get the other text and based on that you can see which button is converting more users so that is something that will also be covering in this project and lastly if you haven't subscribed you know what to do because a lot of exciting things are coming and we'll be learning a lot of new or uh, like the current market current tech stack uh, in this project so i think i deserve a subscribe for that so now i'll see you in the next video which is going to be the phase one of this project so if you are excited comment down below how excited you are share the video and i'll see you on the other side so till then happy coding bye bye